It wasn't perfect, but the Cincinnati Reds got out of Pittsburgh with a series win, all thanks to some not-so-likely heroes. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds. Thanks for making Locked On Reds your first listen of the day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and we are free and available on all podcasting platforms. We are your team every day. I'm Steve Offenbaker. He's Jeff Carr, and we are diehard baseball fans. We have a passion for the Cincinnati Reds. We have taken our love of the game. We've taken our passion for baseball, and we have turned that passion into information for you. We want to thank those of you who are everydayers and listen every day. If you're an everydayer, make sure you let us know. Get in the comment section. Hit us up on Twitter. We want to hear from you because we love talking baseball with you. On today's podcast, we'll take a look at some of the unlikely heroes that came up big yesterday and help the Reds get out of Pittsburgh with a series win. We'll take a look at why David Bell is getting so much heat online from Reds fans right now. And we'll tell you uh, a few of the things that we are done with that the Reds are doing as this playoff race really heats up here in the dog days of summer. Before we get into any of that, I want to shout out the sponsor of today's podcast. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price prices guaranteed all right jeff i think a good way to start this thing off is the way you like to do it with a little bit of the positive and the positive is they had to win that last game of the series and they did they absolutely needed to win this series you and i both said that we thought they would win two of three and they did it uh, but it probably should have been a sweep Uh, and we'll get into a lot more of that coming up a little bit later in the show but with the win In the second game of the doubleheader yesterday, the Reds remain tied for second place in the National League Central with the Cubs. They're three and a half games back of the Brewers. They're also tied with the Cubs just a half game back of the final wildcard spot. Just tread water. Like they said in Finding Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Hunter Green's on his way. We've got bullpen reinforcements on their way. Nick Lodolo started a rehab assignment in Arizona. Just tread water that's what they did and we said coming into the series really if you come out of pittsburgh with anything less than two out of three we got to have an awkward conversation thankfully we're not having that awkward conversation and was it was it rough was it weird was it gritty was it dirty yeah but they got that dub now you're absolutely right when you say that they should have swept the first game on sunday of the double header they had the lead and they blew it in typical fashion as the last like two to three weeks have been for this Reds team, but they were able to rally in game two. Don't throw the baby out the bathwater and look at the loss in game one and totally forget about what they did in game two. They faced two, three different deficits and they came back and then they won in extras. They never led during regulation in the second game of the double header, it, it was one of those games that it felt like, Oh boy, this is just going to be a loss. They just can't get the hits they need. They can't get right. But instead they get the right hits that they need from very unlikely sources. Some guys who I don't necessarily think we would have picked now. Granted, Ellie De La Cruz uncorked a beautiful bomb to straightaway center field, but outside of that, it was some other dudes stepping up in a big way. It, it was, and and Ellie De La Cruz right now, I think, is a, just a, a great miniature example of what's really going on with the Reds right now. Uh, a two two games in one day, and in the first game, he goes zero for four with four strikeouts. I mean, it was just oh, a stinker. I, I'm telling you, uh, if you were if you were listening to the Mad Online people in between games, they were ready to send Ellie back to Louisville between games, which is absolutely ridiculous. He comes out in the second game, goes two for five, hits the home run that you just mentioned. Listen on the season, Jeff. Ellie De La Cruz is hitting 264, 311, 464. That's not a guy you send down right now. Everyone stop. He's going to be right. okay. He's figuring it out. Will he end up moving down even more in the lineup? Maybe, depending on what goes on as guys come back. But Ellie is fine. He's going to figure it out. We're not sending him down. 
get out of here with that. But we talk about the unlikely heroes. Outside of that home run from Ellie De La Cruz, it was everybody else that you don't ever really, really list as, okay, this is the guy that I'm going to lean on to go out there and win us the game. It was none right. of those guys. It was Luke Maley. It was a, two, a big two, B, two RBI day for him. One for three with a walk, two RBIs. Speaking of two RBI days, Stu, Stuart Fairchild, with a clutch two RBI double that really made the, the rally and the win of this game possible. Uh, you know, guys that were not really expecting to do things. Guys were not expecting to do things. Henry Ramos, Jeffrey, three for three with an RBI and a walk. He was on base four times. These are the guys that got it done in game two of the doubleheader. Guys that you didn't necessarily, uh, you know, have... I'm sure lined up on your fan duel parlay. None of these dudes <laughs> were on the list, right? The the odds would have been astronomical. I, I don't know what two RBI days for Luke Maley and Stuart Fairchild look like, but if you had that, I'm I'm guessing you had a nice dinner tonight or something, or you, you enjoyed yourself this evening. Uh, no, this was a beautiful game for all of the reasons that baseball itself is beautiful. There are nine guys on the field. And just because you have an Ellie De La Cruz, just because you have a Matt McLean or a Spencer Steer or a Joey Votto doesn't mean that the other dudes at the bottom of the lineup aren't going to come through in a big way. And even on top of what Stu did, the, the ability that he had to just blaze down that first baseline, beat out that double play throw to give the reds the go ahead run like that play in and of itself with everything that everyone did in that game to get to that point was so important, but the little things, the things that are in the box score, it's going to go down as an offer. It's not a hit. It's a fielder's choice. And it's going to hurt his batting average, but it helped the team. And that is what the Reds needed on Sunday. They needed one of those games because I even sent out the tweet after the first game that the Reds are starting to lose the, the, the rate at which they are losing the quote unquote tough loss games is unsustainable if they hope to make the postseason. but you can buoy a tough loss game with a tough win game. And that was a tough win. And look on the pitching side, we'll have more about Luke Weaver coming up later on in the show because blah, yeah, we both got, we, we got some thoughts, but how about Alexis Diaz? He pitched an inning in two thirds and he looked solid. He bailed out buck farmer before giving way for another guy that you least expect. Daniel Duarte, he was the 27th man on the roster. He was only up because they played two games in one day, and Duarte gets the save. Like, you had a Diaz with the win, which, you know, whatever. We're, we're not big pitcher record people here, but Diaz gets the win. Duarte gets the save. And with the way that Diaz has been playing lately, those those five outs can be huge. Well, it's big because, you know, let's let's be honest. Alexis Diaz has not always been good at those multi inning, you know, save right. situations, those multi inning performance situations. He comes out and that adrenaline falls off between those innings and we see him get roughed up sometimes. And, and we didn't see that this time. He managed to keep the Reds in this game, setting the table to, to earn the win, as you say. And then Duarte getting his first save of the season. Uh, these are the kind of things. These are the kind of games that, you know, it's you know, you sit back and you're like, Ah, it's baseball. Nobody had that. And if you had a three ticket parlay of two RBIs from Fairchild and uh, a save from Duarte, talk about really <laughs> buying a steak dinner. You're you're at you're at Ruby's tonight. That's where you are. Yeah, you you, you definitely made some money on this. But look, this this series was salvaged by the guys that are role players, the guys that you didn't expect to step up and keep. The Reds, not only in this game, but in this playoff race. You know, speaking of wins, speaking of getting things that the Reds needed, the Reds fans online have been very mad at David Bell recently. And coming up, we'll ask, is he the problem? Before we get into that, though, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Game Time. Create your Game Time account today and use the promo code Locked On MLB. You'll get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Game Time is the most reliable. It's what I use. It's what Steve uses whenever we want to get to the ball game. 
last minute. And you know, sometimes you're just like, I want to go down to the ballpark. Game time is going to help you do that. In fact, they are so confident that they will give you the best price. They've got the game time guarantee. If you find a ticket price in your section, your row on another app that is better than what game time is offering, they'll give you 110% of the difference. That's how confident they are that you're getting the best price when you buy. Check them out today. Game time has all the best prices when it's coming to the series with the Reds and the Guardians coming up after the off day. You've got the Reds and the Blue Jays coming up this weekend. Yacht Rock Review if you want yourself a nice little post-game concert. Check them out today. It's game time and create your account by using the promo code Lockdown MLB to get $20 off your first purchase. Game time has last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Thanks as always for making Lockdown Reds your first listen every day. And if you can't be down at the ballpark, make sure that you catch every pitch with the Reds hometown broadcast from Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search the word Reds and coming up. For our everydayers, if you want to be an everydayer, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and you follow us on your favorite podcasting app. Uh, everydayers coming up tomorrow on the show is time to ask if Tyler Stevenson should continue to be the number one catcher on this team. Well, we're going to ask it. That's coming up on tomorrow's Lockdown Reds podcast. With Steven, with these recent struggles, as, as, as most fans are want to do, we point our finger at the manager. Now, every manager, there might have been like one or two exceptions to this, but every manager would say, I want that to happen. Point the finger at me. Don't point the finger at the players. But why is David Bell actually the perfect man to lead this team, despite what everybody else is telling us online? Listen, there's a lot of good reasons to, to keep David Bell around and, and so many of them that they, in fact, did just sign a contract extension to keep him around. He is the right guy in the right place at the right time. He was able to weather the find a nice word, Steve, the crap storm that has been the last few seasons here in Cincinnati. He was able to weather that. He was able to ride it out. And, and now the dividends are coming. All of this young yeah. talent is coming up. And he is exactly the right guy to, to manage this team of very young baseball players. This is a manager that played the game. He had some success. He knows what it's like to be, you know, not quite a superstar, but a well-known player, a well-known name. He knows right. what it's like to, to play the game on an everyday basis. He knows what it's like to also be a journeyman towards the end of his career. He did that too. Uh, you know, he knows all those phases. He knows what it's like to be a major leaguer. Uh, don't underestimate what that means to these young players coming up from the minor leagues. Uh, David Bell is very calm. He, he protects his players. We've seen him go at umpires to protect his players. We've seen him, as you just talked about, talk to the media and, and focus the blame back on him, not the players. Those are the things these young guys need. And in turn, these young guys want to play for him. These young guys want to be yeah. as good as they can be for David Bell. Uh, you know, he is a, a player's manager. He has this clubhouse. I firmly believe it. And he's had it from the beginning. So, you know, get out of here with the fire David Bell stuff. Because one, who are you going to go get right now? Are you going to give the team to Freddie Benavides the rest of the way? Are you going to go try and get Larkin out of the, the, the booth, which a lot of people talk about, but What's the track record? What proof do you have that Barry Larkin knows how to manage a major league baseball game? Sure, he was a successful player. So was David Bell. David Bell wasn't a Hall of Famer, but he was a successful major league player. Uh, there's no reason to make a change right now. Does David Bell do everything perfect, Jeff? No, not even close. And, and we're going to get to that in the next segment of some things that you and I are done with. And right. some of those are things that David Bell is doing. But in, in, in the grand scheme of things, Overall grading of David Bell as the manager, I, I, he's the right guy right now. I, I've got no problem. Yeah, I feel like there's this weird divide amongst Reds fans right now where you either think that David Bell needs to be fired yesterday or you think he doesn't do anything wrong. And that's just not true. There's no such thing as a manager that's made every single move right. He would not have been fired yet. But every manager has gone through a period in their, in their career where they got fired from something. They got let go. Their contract didn't get renewed, whatever it was. There's no manager that's ever been perfect. 
And in the big picture, the grand scheme of things, the Cincinnati Reds were supposed to be contending with 100 losses this year. Are they? No. In fact, if they are able to make some sort of comeback here between now and the end of the season and win the division, David Bell has every right to win manager of the year. Yep. This isn't a situation where there's such thing as a hot seat for David Bell. And I see people saying in the comments and people tweeting on uh, on the on X or whatever it is, Xing on Twitter, tweeting or whatever. They're saying fire him. I don't trust him. He's horrible. He's the worst in the league. He can't make a decision right on the bullpen. He can't put together a lineup. He has no idea what to do with the bench. And who knows? He might even be terrible at making a sandwich. I don't know. None of that is true. He makes bad decisions every now and then. Sure. But one thing that he is so good at, and one thing that just kind of annoys us to no end in post-game press conferences is he is a calming presence in the clubhouse. If you went 0 for 4 with four strikeouts like Ellie De La Cruz did, pretty sure he came back into the dugout and, and David Bell said, man, those were some nice swings. And guess what happened in the second game of the doubleheader? Multi-hit game of the homer. Like the, the calming demeanor that David Bell provides, and we hear it in other players' pressers or, or things that they say, you know, they're like, we don't change our philosophy. We won't change our approach to the game. We know how to approach each and every game. Sometimes we don't get the results that we want. Sometimes we do. And you see it and, and our record speaks for itself. We're a winning baseball club and they're a winning baseball club because of David Bell, not yeah. in spite of him. Absolutely. Listen, there's a lot of video archives on this very YouTube feed in our, our audio feed. You can go back and listen to the last two years. You and I both solidly predicted that this team would be great starting in 2024. I think the phrasing that I used was one of the best teams in baseball with the lowest payroll starting in 2024. I said it over and over and over again. Here's the thing. David Bell has been so good with these young players and Nick crawl has been so good at turning this roster and trading away and getting good value in return that the window opened early and everybody's kind of lost their mind a little bit. We don't still haven't quite figured out how to act. I know it's right. been a long time since there was winning baseball in Cincinnati. Some of y'all have never experienced this before and it shows uh, this team was never supposed to be a division winner in 2023. Now, don't get, don't make this mistake. This team for 2024, you watch. Not only will guys like Jeff and I and all the other podcasts that are out there be picking the Reds to win the division in 24, but the beat writers are going to be picking the Reds to win the division in 2024. And Rosenthal and Passan and all the other national guys are going to be talking about the Cincinnati Reds winning this division in 2024. That was the plan all along. And, and don't think that the Reds aren't going to identify areas of weakness this coming offseason. It's going to be bullpen. It's going to be outfield. They're going to go get a little bit of help for those areas. And this is going to be a solid team moving forward. So right now, they're, they're having to play around some things that they weren't necessarily prepared for. And, and whether you want to hate ownership in the front office for that or not, it is what it is. But that's not David Bell's problem. That's not David Bell's fault. I think for the most part, 95% of the time, he's doing the best he can with what he has available right now and winning baseball games. And that's all you can ask from a manager. And and I feel like there's just this mentality, like players win and managers lose. Like whenever the Reds win, nobody's on Twitter saying, boy, that was a great call. David Bell bringing in that relief pitcher at that time. But you know, if they bring in that relief pitcher and he gives up a home run, they're like, why did David Bell bring him in? You know, some version of that, that might've been a little dramatic, but wow, a little dramatic, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's a little dramatic. Um, <laughs> but, no, I, I, I just think it's so funny how we react to managers and I'm just not there. Like I love baseball and I watch baseball every single day. And I have never been that guy to be like, how on earth can you call? Now there are a couple of guys that we want them to stop calling on, but there's an element of baseball that the manager is going to call on you. You got to execute. And if you don't execute, how is that David Bell's fault? 
I mean, I, I just think, and, and people, people were like singling out, you, people love to single out the guys who are in the middle of slumps. And I think this is one of the perfect reasons that makes David Bell a good manager is that he is trustworthy with his players. He's not going to overreact to his slump. And because he doesn't, those guys know that, okay, I can work through this. I can figure out what's going on. And then whenever they break out of that slump in the big way, it was one of the first dudes to congratulate him. David Bell is because David Bell is a good manager. Look, you can cherry pick a missed call all you want or a move that didn't pan out. But the big picture is David Bell is good for the Reds. No, absolutely. He's the perfect guy to lead a very young team into success. And while David Bell is the guy we want leading this team right now, there are some things that the Reds are doing, some decisions that Bell is making that both Jeff and I, well, we are just simply done with them. We'll tell you what those things are coming up right after this. Remember that if you can't be at the ballpark, you can catch every pitch of the Reds hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just download the SXM app and search the word Reds. You can also follow this podcast on all platforms, including right here on YouTube. And if you haven't done so yet, join us over on our Discord server. We have a tremendous community developing over there on Discord. There's a link down in the description where we're in there every day talking baseball and some off-topic stuff too. There's a there's a little Bengals channel in there. There's some off-topic stuff. There's some Immaculate Grid stuff in there. Uh, there's a little something for everyone. So check us out on Discord. Again, the link is down there in the description. All right, Jeff, there are some things, though. We talked about David Bell being the right guy. We talked about David Bell doing the right things. Uh, but there are some things with this team that I'm done with, that you're done with, that I don't want to see any more of. And the very first one of those things is Luke Weaver. It would not hurt my feelings if they did not let him leave Pittsburgh with the team and they made him walk. That would be fine with me. He yeah. needs to go. How he's still getting big league starts is absolutely beyond me. No, it, and, and it's to the point that for a moment while we were prepping and we were getting our notes together and stuff, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do a comparison. We're going to do one of those blind comparisons. We got the stats like, okay, player A is going to be like this. Player B is going to be like this. And I stopped because – I want player B and I almost don't even care what his stats are. Like the, the one guy that I thought of, like while I was watching the game, I went back and I looked at last year's stats for chase Anderson. That's where I was. That was the headspace that I was in watching Luke Weaver pitch. I thought about chase Anderson and obviously the ERA, the, the FIP, all that stuff. That was actually kind of comparable. They were both very similar. Chase Anderson actually had a better walks plus hits per innings pitch. So on average, he allowed less base runners than Luke Weaver does. And the Reds gave him seven starts in a year that didn't matter. And for some reason in a year that has turned into a year that matters, they continue to roll Luke Weaver out every fifth day in fact it's to the point that graham ashcraft leads this team and starts and luke weaver is second luke weaver know. why i i don't know if you happened to catch sam lecure on the post game show yesterday but you know he kind of just wondered aloud you know if you're luke weaver how do you even go back out there and pitch another game how do you do that i don't think they should let him Listen, if you're not going to call up Connor Phillips, fine. I don't care. If you're not going to get another uh, rookie's clock started, if you're worried about that, I don't care. I would rather they start that Kennedy dude, whatever his first name is, Brad, Kennedy, John, yeah. Joe, Brett, whatever. See, I can't even keep up with this. But I would rather they start Kennedy the next time through than to let Luke Weaver take the mound again. I know Hunter Green is coming. He's probably two more turns through this rotation away from coming back to the big leagues. That's two more turns too many for Luke Weaver to have a baseball yeah. in his hand. He should not pitch. He should not pitch at all. Uh, give it to Kennedy, do a bullpen day because that's what you do anyway. So just yeah. let's just do that. I mean, if we're going to run the bullpen into the ground anyway, let's skip the part where Luke Weaver gives up four runs before we do a bullpen day. Let's just start with the bullpen. Yeah. I, I it's funny because there was a moment and I forget who was at the plate, but Luke Weaver throughout this entire game, which wasn't, I say entire game as if he pitched the entire game. He didn't throughout his 
appearance. He got to three ball counts to what felt like every hitter. And there was a dude in the fourth inning that he got to a three O count, three balls and no strikes count. And as he's coming set, as he's getting ready to get the signal from Luke Maley, he hangs his head for a minute and he, and he does this and I'm going to, for our YouTube crowd, I'm going to, he just hangs his head and he just, <sighs> he like shakes his head and then comes set. He's like, here we go. Here comes another pitch. Like, I think what Sam LaCure said was because of that clip, because at that moment, I don't even know that Luke Maley knew why he was on that mound. And I feel, or uh, Luke Maley, well, Luke Weaver knew why he was on that mound. And I really think that there uh, I'm with you, Brett Kennedy, um, call up Connor Phillips, um, go sign someone off of the waivers. I, th I, I think at this point I would rather have well, Mr. Outside hire come in and yeah, pitch. And there's, and there's options. They can bring Lion Richardson back up here for another start and there's Lion no Richardson, impact on seen. roster moves. They can bring uh, Levi Stout back up here and, yep. and do Get whatever you got to do because listen, the results, even if they're bad, the results are not going to be that much different. And maybe you can hope beyond just a little bit of hope that there might be a different result, but the right. definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Luke Weaver is the definition of insanity right now, <laughs> running him out there, allowing him to start major league baseball games is insane. It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result that you're not going to get. I really thought I would have this many games to wear the t-shirt. I would have asked them to make that t-shirt back in April. I didn't think he was going to get 22 starts. Are we, are we kidding? Are we serious? You know who else needs to stop pitching at this point? They need to shut him down, put him on the IL for some phantom reason or something like that is Buck Farmer. Look, he's pitched admirably. He's been a fine relief pitcher for most of the year, but he is no longer a guy that the Reds should feel like they can trust out of the bullpen. And looking at some numbers, I mean, you can look at ERA, you can look at FIP. We've always talked about whether good or bad, those are kind of fool's gold stats when it comes to a relief pitcher. You really look at their strikeout and their walk rate. His strikeout rate is okay. It's slightly, it's like right around league average at like 22% since the beginning of July, because I'm looking at like beginning of July to now he's really hit a downward slide. The thing that's killing him and the thing that's killing quite a few relief pitchers in this Reds bullpen is his walk rate. League mm -hmm. average is 8%. He's at 13. 14.4%. He's 5% above league average. We're talking about a dude who averages a runner and a half per inning with his whip. Like that's just, it's too much that there's no point where I'm going to trust Mark farmer from here on out. And, and, and I get it. He came over as a waiver ad. He wasn't a huge get at the time. They were just hoping to get something out of him. I think they got something out of him. And now what's left is we got to go to somebody else. Yeah, because what we're seeing takes us into the next thing that I want to make mention of. It's not all bad that we're going to talk about this segment. There's some good things happening, but then some of these bad things are overshadowing it. So yeah, because of things like that, because of the high walk rates, because the bullpen has been inconsistent, it spoiled some good pitching from the starters that weren't getting recognized early on. The starting pitching group that we complained about for a long time, uh, there have been some growth in there by leaps and bounds. And one of those guys is Brandon Williamson and his yes. last seven starts, Jeff, he's three and zero with a 2.89 ERA 36 strikeouts with 13 walks. His whip is 1.02 in 37.1 innings pitched. Uh, he should have a lot more wins than that, but the bullpen is letting games get away. The, the bullpen is allowing him to end up with a lot of no decisions. And that's a problem. I'm done with the bullpen doing that to him. Uh, Brandon Williamson has done the thing that I had hoped and that I, I that I pitched, pun intended, when I kept saying, call him up. I wanted him up here to continue to grow at the major league level. I wanted him to work with the other pitchers and with Derek Johnson every day. I felt like his work was finished in Louisville. He had nothing else to learn down there. And that's exactly what happened. He came to Cincinnati. He came to the big league level. He continued to grow his game. And he's pitching great games right now. And the bullpen is messing it up. And I'm I'm done with that. Yeah, I, I really feel like 
the the thing the thing about that stat line that we just shared the 37 and a third innings in his last seven starts like that's another thing like look david bell is the right manager for the cincinnati reds but there are a few things he needs to tweak he needs to trust brandon williamson more because we saw it in the first game of this doubleheader he pulled him out too early and i get it lucas sims got out of the inning they didn't score all this other stuff he walked one guy and he only had thrown 88 pitches at that point. Like, it's not as if he had put himself in a bases loaded jam with nobody out. There were two outs, and he walked the guy with 88 pitches. Leave him in there. Let him finish that inning. Let him get that quality start. He has shown to me that he deserves more trust from David Bell. He, he's he got a lot of talent, dude. I can't wait to see more from him. Yeah, you can't be Captain Hook with Brandon Williamson and then give Luke Weaver 20 damn starts at the big league level. <laughs> you can't be both. You can't be both of those guys. You can't. You can't do it. Yeah, that's – um. what was it? I was, I was thinking of uh, Luke Weaver is the – is like the Reds leaving the check engine light on for like two months, and then all of a sudden they're broke down on the side of the road, and they're like, what happened? Yeah, Luke Weaver. Luke Weaver, what happened? You know who else happened is uh, Kevin Newman. Look. Ugh, Newman. The, the Reds cut ties, or they didn't cut ties. They sent Nick Senzel down to AAA, which I applaud them for. That was a good move. They need to do something with Kevin Newman now, similar mm-hmm. in that vein, because he's just – even even the thing that everybody defends him for, and I've even been that guy to defend him about hitting left-handed pitchers. He's not even doing that. Nope. Last last twenty at bats versus left-handed pitching since July first, three for twenty against left-handed that's pitching. Awful. That's not that's not valuable enough to keep him around. Uh, I don't know, you know, listen, I posted that picture way back in May, I think on Twitter of David Bell looking, you know, kind of longingly into the dugout, smiling that half smile and said, uh, get yourself a a manager that looks at you the way David Bell looks at journeyman middle infielders. And that remains true. I don't understand why Kevin Newman's still around. Uh, My hope is that when India comes back, if India comes back, uh, Newman is the guy that goes. In the meantime, they don't necessarily have to stick with Newman that long. There's other options that don't include promoting Noel V. Marte. And I know that's where everybody's going to go. I don't think that's going to happen this year. I think they're trying to be strategic with Connor Phillips and Noel Marte and start their clocks next year. That's fine. But there are other options. I would rather see uh, uh, Jose Barrero get one more turn through than watch Kevin Newman play again. I would rather yeah. see Aleo Lopez, who, you know, yeah. did – just fine in his opportunities at the big league level. Wasn't anything spectacular. Wasn't anything to really like catch your eye and say he should be playing every day, but I think he can do better than Kevin Newman. And I would rather see him. I agree. Uh, Matt Reynolds, rather see him. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I just, I'm done with Kevin Newman at this point. And, And I think that, the trade was a weird one at the time. Dowry Moretta for Kevin Newman. And we lost that one. Yeah, I think you're right. If you if you had gosh, what would the lineup look like for David Bell if you had Kevin Newman, Kyle Farmer? Let's even reach back a little bit. Let's uh let's go get Jerry Harrison. Let's say uh Skip <laughs> Schumacher and um yeah, no, I mean, the, his lineup. Would you be wouldn't hilarious. even be able to contain David Bell's joy. You, would, <laughs> yeah. you, you say you want him to be more animated. He would be more animated. <laughs> He'd be really happy. Yeah. Uh, no, that's uh, th- look, it's, it's, it's apparent. The big picture says, yes, David Bell is a good manager for the Cincinnati Reds team. He's not perfect though. There's some things he needs to change and he needs to get, he needs to be done with Kevin Newman. He needs to trust Brandon Williamson more. Needs to be done with Buck Farmer, and dear God, get anyone else to start the next start that Luke Weaver was supposed to start. And on that happy note, let's put a pin in this edition of Locked on Reds. Before we get out of here, don't forget that you can catch every pitch of the Reds' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just download the SXM app and search the word Reds. That'll wrap up this edition of Locked On Reds. Thanks, as always, for making us your first listen every day. Every day is coming up on the next Locked On Reds podcast. Should Tyler Stevenson continue being the unquestioned catcher number one? 
we will give you our thoughts. But until then, Steve, what can people expect from me and you? We're going to continue to be locked in on what the Reds are doing. We're going to be locked in on David Bell's managerial moves. We're going to keep an eye on what's going on down in Louisville as the season uh, gets close to an end down there in the minor leagues. And we're going to gather up all that information and report back to keep you locked on Reds every single day. I swear to God, I'd rather watch you pitch than Luke Weaver. I think I'd rather try to pitch than watch Luke.